Hello and welcome back to this GCSE Chemistry Revision Series brought to you by RevisedChemistry.uk In today's video we're going to be learning about the reactivity series, reactions of metals, redox, reduction and oxidation, and displacement reactions. When metals react with other substances, metals form positive ions. The reactivity of a metal is related to its tendency to form positive ions. The higher up the reactivity series the metal is, the easier it is to oxidize. Metals can be arranged in order of their reactivity in something called the reactivity series. On the screen now is the reactivity series that you need to know. These metals have been arranged in this order based on their average reactions with things like water and dilute acid. From the reactivity series on the screen, you need to be able to describe what kind of reactions these metals have with water and acid. Most metals do not occur naturally on their own. They normally occur in compounds, and that compound is normally made of the metal and oxygen. So when we want to take that metal out of the ground and use it, we have to remove the oxygen from the compound. We call that process reduction because we're removing oxygen from the compound. For the metal to have formed a compound in the first place with oxygen, it has to have reacted with it and we call that process oxidation. Those of you studying the higher course need to know that reduction and oxidation also can refer to the removal or the addition of electrons. A handy way to remember this is using something called oil rig. Oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. The metals in the middle part of the reactivity series, so that are less reactive than carbon but more reactive than hydrogen, can be found in ore form with oxygen. And the way we remove the oxygen from these compounds is by reacting them with carbon. This is technically a type of displacement reaction. Carbon is more reactive than these metals, and so will preferentially bond with oxygen and displace the metal out of the compound. We can react iron oxide with carbon monoxide. And on the screen now, we can see all of the various reactions that happen to get to that point. You don't need to know all of these off by heart, but you do need to be aware that these reactions can happen. Iron oxide plus carbon monoxide makes iron and carbon dioxide. And we can see from this reaction, the carbon takes the oxygen out of the iron oxide and leaves iron by itself. All metals that are less reactive than hydrogen, so things like copper, gold and silver, can be found in a native state in the Earth's crust. That means we don't have to do anything special to extract them, we just find them as pure metal in the ground. A more reactive metal can displace a less reactive metal from a compound in solution. This is similar to the way that the group 7 elements will displace themselves in solution as well. Displacement reactions are one way to actually extract metals from solution. For example, magnesium plus copper sulfate makes copper plus magnesium sulfate. For this reaction, we can write an ionic equation. This shows us the ions that change during the chemical reaction. It's useful as it shows us what is oxidized and what is reduced. First of all, we write a balanced symbol equation. Then, we can separate all of these out into the ions that are involved. Take note that some of these we don't turn into ions. Magnesium and copper solid, for example. These are not in solution, so do not split up into ions. We can identify from this the ions that don't change. These are called the spectator ions. They are of no interest in the reaction, and so we can ignore them and write out an ionic equation. Once we have an ionic equation, we can take it one step further and look at half equations. These look at how the electrons behave. We can see here that there are only two different chemicals involved and we can split our equation in half to make half equations. We can see on the screen now the half equations for copper and magnesium. We can see that copper ends up gaining electrons and this means that copper has been reduced. We can see that magnesium loses electrons and therefore it has been oxidized. 